We've been getting going through mechanics and what we're going to do is we're going to push forward into a really important topic, one I've been waiting for a long time to introduce and it's best explained by, well, some sports. And so what I'm going to do is make sure you've got your sound nice and clear. I'm going to um, share a different screen through here and show you a very, very brief video. So enjoy. If you look closely at this pack of riders in the Tour de France, you'll see some of the best cyclists in the world. They're here in the back. They're keeping up, but also resting, while their teammates in the front do most of the work. It's a technique called drafting, and it's what helps them survive the three-week race around France. But drafting only really makes a difference on these parts of the route, the long, flat, and hilly stages. Here, cyclists ride together in a formation called a peloton. It allows cyclists to save energy by sitting behind another rider or drafting. At high speeds, riders use most of their energy to pedal against wind resistance. But when a rider stays close behind another, they're sheltered from much of that. So pedaling becomes much easier and they can keep up with the front riders. The way to measure this is to look at how much power a cyclist generates. Here at the front of the peloton, a Tour de France rider will generate at least 300 watts of power. I jumped on a bike to see what that feels like and just two kilometers holding 300 watts was really, really hard. By comparison, when a rider is behind the lead in the peloton, they only need to generate about 240 watts to move at the same speed. Holding 240 watts for two kilometers felt remarkably easier. So even though these two might finish a 200 kilometer flat stage at the same time, one is going to be way less tired than the other. That's why you see some of the tour's best riders here in the back. They're drafting off their teammates, whose job it is to do the hard work now so that the team's best cyclist is rested for the most difficult part, the mountains, where they'll have to be on their own. I, I just couldn't help but take this opportunity because some of you might know if you're a cycling fan that uh, the Tour de France is in its final stages now. Um, and it just seemed so perfect to me that that sport was going on, even though it's like it's once a year, right? So it doesn't go around. I think it's like, I don't know, something like 22, 23 days or something like that, that it lasts, but it happens to coincide with when we are learning this very particular part of mechanics. Uh, you guys know that so far through all the different kinds of motion that we've been looking at, we've more or less been ignoring ignoring the medium that objects are passing through, whether that is air, like you see with the cyclists, or other uh, media that actually push back against whoever is trying to move through the medium. Um, you see this technique of drafting that they explained in that video. I wonder if anyone knows, um, and you're welcome to post it in the chat, uh, another sport that makes a big deal about this, um, particularly when you're doing longer distance, um, I wonder if any of you actually did this when you were younger yourselves. I know I had to because I had terrible asthma. Um, and I know Mrs. Leeds was actually also a very good swimmer as well. Um, the whole principle of drafting works anywhere where the medium that you're trying to move against is trying to move against you or trying to push back against you. Now, this particular part of mechanics, maybe some of you guessed, and this is the time to make your heading if you uh, would like to, this part of mechanics is called resisted motion. That's the heading you can make. The usual, the most frequent kind of uh, resistance comes from, like I mentioned, the medium you're traveling through. And that might be air or water or maybe some particularly viscous fluid. Um, that's not the only kind of resistance that you can get. Um, also, you get resistance from things like friction, um, which is sort of like a, a subset of this, if you like, because when you're going through a medium, you're just getting all this friction from all of the, the molecules and particles that you're colliding with in the air or the water. So this idea of resisted motion is uh, really important to consider in situations like this. Um, we've been ignoring it for a long time because under most circumstances, resistance can be thought of as negligible, right? Uh, it's so small that in comparison to all the rest of the forces that you're worrying about, like say the mass of an object or the force with which it's projected out of a cannon or something like that, um, air resistance might as well not be there. But in, uh, and I said air resistance, I said resistance, in, I should say resistance in general. In situations like these, resistance makes a really big difference, like 15 to 20 percent difference. That is enormous when it comes to whether you win the race or lose the race. So that's why we're going to look at resisted motion now. 
So what we're going to do in our time together is have a look at this example. Uh, we're going to try and highlight all of the bits of it that are important. And then there are also um, a few questions in the exercise over in Canvas for you. So um, you can have a look at this question. You don't need to write down all of it, as is the case in many motion questions. There's a lot of detail, um, but we will highlight the important bits that you should write down because otherwise you can't solve the question without them. Well, let's start at the top. It says, a rowing eight, so you know, eight guys, eight girls in a canoe or a kayak or something like that. They cross a finish line in a race with speed five and a half meters per second and then they stop rowing. Okay, so here's the situation. Like I mentioned before with swimming, um, the water that they are, that this boat is traveling through is resisting their motion and that's why I have to row hard to go up against it. In a greatly simplified mathematical model, the boat is slowed by two drag forces. So when they say drag, um, this is kind of one of the um, aerodynamic words, the physics words that indicates to us there is this resistance coming back from the medium they're traveling through. Um, and then it highlights, not that it matters too much for our purposes, two things, um, skin drag, and then later on it says form drag. And all that's meant by that is, I think the um, analogy that was given to me once, is skin drag is the thing we're trying to reduce by putting on a swimming cap. So if you put a swimming cap over a swimmer's head, we got some swimming caps right here. You don't change the shape of the head um, that you're swimming through the water, but what you do change is the actual surface that's being that's going through the water, namely hair, versus this you know plastic, latex, that kind of thing, which is much smoother. Um, so it would experience less skin drag, so less resistance. Whereas you've also got form drag, which comes from, as the question says. Um, the shape of the boat pushing the water aside. Okay, so what we've got is uh, skin drag, form drag, and then they provide to us two expressions that represent each of those respectively. So here is the expression for skin drag, and then I'm gonna put this one here in green. This is the expression for form drag, and those are pretty important to write down. I would write them separately to the equation that we're about to get here. Thus, the force equation is. All right, now there's a lot to unpack here. Let's see what's going on. On the left-hand side, hopefully you recognize this. This is mass times acceleration. So MA, that's force. So maybe you want to just indicate that. That whole thing is force. And then what you've got is, what colors have I not used? There we go. Um, you've got this minus sign that comes over here in the force equation. And what does that indicate? It indicates that the two kinds of drag, skin drag, for, uh, form drag, they're both slowing down. They're both reducing um, the velocity, making it go further and further down to zero. So this negative indicates reduction or slowing. I might just say slowing. Okay, then if you have a look carefully, right, you've got, uh, I'm gonna look over here on the left-hand side first. You've got this MV on 100. So where does that come from? That's the form drag you can see there. So I'm going to highlight that in green. I think I've got a color for that somewhere. There we go. So there's the MV on 100. That's where that comes from. And then you've got uh, this uh, 1 over 10 mv squared. So if you got the same denominator, 1 over 100, then you'd have a 10 up the top, 10 over 100, so 10 mv squared, um, and that m has already been factorized out, you can see there in front of the brackets. So that's why this 10 v squared is what you get from the skin drag. So those two things are just combined together, and they're both slowing us down, so that's why it's negative. Okay, uh, that is the force equation, and x is given as the distance past the finish line. So in some ways you could call this the initial condition, um, even though the entire race has been going, but we're just interested in what happens after you cross the finish line. So x equals zero is the finish line, and then as x gets bigger, you go further and further along. Um, then v is the speed of the boat. All right, so what do we do with this? Well, firstly, part A, we want to find the velocity as a function of displacement, V as a function of X. 